Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will learn some algebra for mathematical Olympiads and ISI CMI entrances. At the end of this video, I will ask you a challenge question. Please try it and put it in the comment section. Okay. The problem says that there are n numbers, n numbers, x1 up to xn which add up to 1. The sum of the n numbers is 1. Here is a problem solving strategy. Whenever a problem is stated in n numbers, just make it easier for your mind to process. Make n 4 or 5 or 3, whatever. So, for example, I have done this for four numbers, A, B, C, D, the general case, N numbers, okay? Sum of these four numbers is one. In the general case, sum of this N numbers is one. That is given. We want to find out the maximum value of, the maximum value of square root of X1 up to square root of xn, sum of these square roots. We want to find out the maximum value of this. In the particular case, so that it's easier for our brain to process, find the maximum possible value of square root of a plus square root of b plus square root of c plus square root of d less than equals to what? What is the maximum value of this sum? How do we approach this problem? Well, here is a problem-solving strategy. Whenever you see a bunch of square roots getting added up, think about the cauchy schwartz inequality. This is a very important inequality in Mathematical Olympiad Algebra and it is fundamental to the world of inequalities. You know, when I teach calculus in ISI entrance program or to level 7 or level 8 students at Chinta in some special calculus modules, I always start with inequalities because if you do inequalities properly, you will naturally be progressing into differential calculus. They are so intricately related. Start with inequality and then you go into differential calculus. This is how it was done when every, all of these discourses started in the middle of the 16th century. So that's a different story. Maybe I can come back to that in some other video. Cauchy Schwartz inequality is one such beautiful inequality, it's a fundamental result, which basically says dot product of two points, points means two coordinates, right? So we have, let's say we have two coordinates, x1 to xn is one point, and y1 to yn is another point in the n-dimensional space, if you would like, make it a two-dimensional space, x1, x2, y1, y2, two different points. If you want your brain to process it even easy, in a more easier way, just 2, 3, 5, 7. Two points, their dot product is less than or equal to their product of magnitudes. So what is the dot product of two points in the n-dimensional space? You just multiply coordinate wise and then you add up. So x1 y1 plus x2 y2 up to xn yn. This is the dot product in n-dimensional space. You want to process it in an easier way? 
do it for two dimensions x1 y1 plus x2 y2 you want to further make your brain tax free <laughs> just do it with numbers 2 into 5 plus 3 into 7 2 into 5 is 10 3 into 7 is 21 so 10 plus 21 31 that's the dot product of these two points it's a single number this is a strategy to you know teach your brain certain things which are symbolically hard to parse but then you when you reduce it to numbers it at once becomes much simpler okay what is the product of magnitudes well it is square root of x1 square up to xn square times square root of y1 square up to yn square so if you have a point in the two dimensional plane let's suppose this point is x1 x2 then the distance of this point from the origin by pythagoras theorem is x1 square plus x2 square square root this is the magnitude of this point a its distance from the origin that's what i have written this is the magnitude of the first point this is the magnitude of the second point we take their product what the cauchy schwarz inequality says is the dot product of the two points is always less than or equal to product of the magnitudes if i write it down it will simply be x1 y1 x2 y2 up to xn yn is less than or equal to square root of x1 square up to xn square times square root of y1 square up to yn square this is what the cauchy schwarz inequality is about it's actually a little bit more than that so here is a challenge question actually it is the absolute value of this because this dot product could be negative that word could as well be negative so this is always positive if this is negative then it really doesn't make any much of a difference because negative values are always less than equal to positive values if you put the absolute value sign now you have something substantial this is also positive this is also positive now you say okay left hand side is smaller than equal to right hand side it's a harder problem to solve so the challenge is how can you prove that the absolute value of the dot products is less than equals to the product of the magnitude can you put a proof of that in the comment section i'll just remove the dot absolute value for now to avoid confusion dot product less than equal to product of magnitudes okay how am i going to use this in this particular problem let me do it for the case of n equals to 4 the same thing would work for a general n i'll do it for 4 just so our brain takes it easy okay so we have a b c d some of these numbers is given as 1 we want square root of a square root of b square root of c square root of d less than equal to what that's the question i'm going to set it up in the form of cauchy schwarz inequality so here is the way we do it you have x1 x2 x3 x4 that's the first point and the second point is y1 y2 y3 y4 that is the second point the trick to apply cauchy schwarz inequality in problems is to figure out what are these two points in the context of the problem so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this up like this this is square root of a square root of b square root of c square root of d this is one 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 
you will see that in the context of this problem, this works magically. Now, if I use cauchy schwarz inequality here, what I'm going to get is, on the left-hand side, I'll get the dot product of them, which is square root of A times 1, square root of B times 1, square root of C times 1, square root of D times 1. This is less than or equal to product of the magnitude. So, you take the square root of square root of A whole square, square root of B whole square, square root of C whole square, square root of D whole square times square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. Okay, so left hand side is exactly what I wanted. It is square root of A plus square root of B plus square root of C plus square root of D less than or equal to square root of A plus B plus C plus D times square root of 4. We are almost there. You have to just write one more line and your answer is there. So here is a challenge. Just one more line. Nothing, nothing extraordinary needs to be done here. Just replace something with something and you'll be done. So in the general case, can you tell me, can you solve the general case now? If x1 up to xn is 1, can you solve the general case and tell me what is this maximal value? One conceptual point that we have to address when we are proving the cauchy schwarz inequality is that, is it always less than or equal to? That means for some value of xi, can this value be realized? Can it reach the maximum value? The answer is yes for a very special scenario. So can you tell me, this is challenge 3, for what special values of A, B, C, D, the maximum value of square root of A plus square root of B plus square root of C plus square root of D can be achieved. For what values of A, B, C, D, can the maximum value of a square root of a plus square root of b plus square root of c plus square root of d can be achieved? Can you find that out and tell me in the comment section? The third challenge. The students who have done this, all the three, we will do all the three challenges. We, and we might invite them to present their work in our channel. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in beautiful mathematics, non-routine problem solving, research for school students, or leadership opportunities, then please connect with us. Our community does all of these things since 2010. We are focused on building an alternative to the rat race that is known as education in our country. And several Chitta students have done that. They are in Harvard, Stanford, Indian Statistical Institute, Chennai Mathematical Institute, and some of the best places in the world having great time with mathematical sciences. So I'm sure you can also enjoy that. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Keep on doing great work. Okay, bye.